Okay, uh, as we begin this morning, uh, we're going to be in 1 John, we're in chapter 5, and I think Brother Mark stopped at verse 13 last, no uh, last night, or maybe that was last week, <laughs> Sure, but anyhow, uh, 13, and so I thought we'd start 14. The plan is 14, 15, 16, 17. That's the plan. And uh, so we're going to begin this morning with that scripture in verse 14. Uh, and it's speaking of prayer. Uh, it's talking about prayer. And, you know, that's something that if you are a believer... That's one of our lifelines to the Lord is prayer. And it's so urgently important that we pray. And so it says in verse 14, and this is the confidence that we have in him. Confidence. This is the confidence that we have in him. And we're talking about in, in, uh, in God. You know, Brother Mark has been uh, talking about uh, Jesus and, and uh, talking about knowing him. And in verse 13, it really uh, does address that. Some more, he says, these things I've written unto you that you believe on the name of the Son of God, that you may, uh, that you may know that you have eternal life. So he's been talking to us about that the last couple of Sundays. And so this scripture uh, is springboarding off of knowing him. It's springboarding off of knowing Jesus Christ as uh, the Son of God. Remember the two things John's addressing through the Holy Spirit in this first John, the, the chapters, is that the person of Jesus and the work of Jesus. Those two things, because those were the two things that were throwing the believers in that area was the person of Jesus. And that's what Brother Mark really has talked to us about in the, in the last couple of weeks, the person of who Jesus is, and he's addressed the work that Jesus came to do. And so in verse 14, it says, this is the confidence that we have in him that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. Confidence. This is the full trust that we can have in God in, through Jesus Christ uh, that if we ask anything, full trust, believe, we believe in his power because we believe in who he is. We know who he is. And so we have full trust. We, you know, uh, I was reading the notes. The notes say proper believing leads to proper confidence, leads to proper assurance. And that is really true. And it says that if we ask anything, now really what I should do, and I do have it circled in my Bible, according to his will. You know, sometimes this is kind of where we get mixed up. It, to us, we'll say, well, if we, I ask anything uh, in, uh, he, if I ask anything, uh, he will hear me and he will answer my prayer. That's not what the Bible says. It says if we ask anything that is according to his will, that he hears us. So, you know, w prayer is a wonderful, wonderful thing. It is a wonderful thing. Uh, way to know and to, to understand uh, God and to understand his word and, and to look, you, you can't traverse this life without prayer if you're a child of God. You know that. You cannot do that. So uh, prayer is a wonderful thing. Uh, and it says that he that hath the life of God dwelling within him, that's the Holy Spirit shall have petitions granted because the Holy Spirit will move man to ask in accordance with the will of God. Our desire, whether we verbally state when we pray, Lord, I want your will to be done in this situation, or you know what I think it is more than anything, if you're a child of God, it's a heart position. Now, we should say it at times as well. Father, if this be your will, and I do a lot of the time. And he says, if we pray in accordance with his will, that he will hear us. And so, you know, uh, we pray, surrender to his will. 
uh, you know, as a believer, we may fail to actually verbalize, Lord, if it is your will, I ask that you do this. But the truth is, the position of my heart is, Lord, if it is your will. Now, I've done it the other way, too. I have prayed, saying, Lord, if it is your will that you would do this. But you know what? Sometimes I, my heart position was not toward his will. It was toward Carolyn's will. Okay? So we, if the, even as a believer, if we fail to ask the will of God... Uh, we and we don't fully surrender to His will. We we just got to let go and trust God. We have to let go and trust God because sometimes we're not really surrendered to His will. We say we are, but the truth is, when push comes to shove, we're going to shove back and say no, no, no. That's not what I want. Therefore, that cannot be God. That must be the devil talking to me. No, usually it's me talking to me. I want what I want. And I'm going to let God in on it by praying. I may even let God in on it by saying, if it is your will. But the truth is, I can be so bent on doing what I want to do that, you know, sometimes he just lets me go my way. But now, uh, it says if he, if I ask anything according to his will, he will hear us. If I ask according to will, he will hear us. And in verse 15 it says, and if we know that he hears us, if you are a child of God and you are praying, I'm learning this more and more as I uh, grow up. More and more. If I pray, he's hearing me. If I pray with my heart surrendered to him, he is hearing me. I don't have to wonder if he hears me. I don't have to think about if he hears me. If I'm praying according to his will that uh, he hears me, if we know he hears us, look at this. And if we know he hears us because our hearts are surrendered to him, whatever his will is, if our hearts are surrendered to him, we can know that we know that we know he hears us when we pray. It doesn't matter what we're praying about. If I'm surrendered to his will, he is hearing me. And if we know that he hears us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desired of him. Now, we're, uh, let's talk about this a little bit. And guys, if you uh, uh, want to jump in with something, please, please let me know. Would you come say it here so other people can hear? <laughs> because this morning, I really don't mind help. Well, I know time's precious, so I won't well, much. No, but go ahead. <clears throat> Everything that she's been telling us this morning about God's will, and it's something that the Lord was showing me, speaking to my heart as she was reading from the Word. <clears throat> See, we, we as, as human beings, we like shortcuts. Yes. We like to do it, you know, I, I, I see a shorter avenue. I see, I see a shorter way. But God's not into shortcuts. It takes time to work His will within us. Good. And but we as as mankind we love shortcuts. And I think of Abram and Sarah. They yes. want a shortcut to fulfill God's promise, but God said, This is not what I've willed. Mm -hmm. So I just I just really felt led to just to input that. Yes, so. thank you, Brother Mark. Come come up here, Brother Roger. And while it's on my mind, and look at the repercussions of that situation with Abram, Abraham and Sarah when they took that shortcut. The repercussions and the repercussions continuing, I think, even until today. You know, if you look at John's gospel, John's epistles, you know, you, you see a thing <clears throat> of knowing him. Yes. Uh, we know that we know him if we keep his commandments. That's one of the things that he says. And being one with him uh, also is a theme, especially in the Gospel of John. The word confidence means to confide. 
That's the root word. Whenever you spend time with him, you know him. That's true. Yes. And he confides in you. And when you know him and you're one with him, then you know what it is, his, his will for you. You know, we, we look back in the Gospels. He's, Jesus is the revealed will of God. Yes. So everything yes. he did was the will of God. He healed the sick. He cast out devils. He fed the hungry. He preached the good news to the poor. He, he set people free from bondages. You know, that we, we see that's the will of God. But in your own life, you know, you have to let God confide in you. And when he confides in you about what he wants for your life, because... You know, if you're created by design, then you have a purpose. And if you have a purpose, then you have a destiny. And if you have a destiny, then you have stewardship involved. So you can't go contrary to the design. The Bible says the Lord has chosen our inheritance for us. You know, when we ask God for things, you know, we shouldn't ask it contrary to his design for our life. Okay, I'm not called to be a pastor. So I shouldn't try to be a pastor. All right. I shouldn't ask God for a church. That would be contrary. That those kind of things, you know, when we say, you know, nevertheless, not my will. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You take like Brother Allen, he's a car, he, he loves to fool with cars. And, and I've had good success with dealing with that. that that's kind of like where I'm bent toward, not in the sense that like he is. You know, some people like Brother Marvin are, are engineers. You know, he likes to work on stuff and turn riches. I hate that. So it's not, not meant for me to try to go that direction. And, and I know I'm, I'm looking at the carnal part of our lives. You know what I'm saying? Even in design, you know, maybe you're designed to be with a certain type of person as a mate. You know, you shouldn't try to go contrary to what God's called you to be with somebody that is not designed to be with you. Mm -hmm. and, and, and praying that way. You know, we have to be careful. I look, am I taking up too much of your time? No, no, go ahead. I'm just thinking about my own life okay. here. <laughs> of course, it's all about me, you understand. <laughs> I was studying the book of Daniel the other day, and as I listened to Daniel, Daniel was reading the Word of God. And in the Word of God, he saw that Jeremiah the prophet had prophesied that Israel would be in captivity for seven years, 70 years. The 70 years had come and gone, and Israel was still in captivity. So Daniel went to the Lord with fasting and prayer and began to pray about the promises in the Scripture. And the Bible says that the first day he prayed, God sent a heavenly emissary to bring him the word that he was praying about, about the return of Israel out of Babylonian captivity. So Daniel had to co-labor with God in prayer to bring about the plan and purposes of God in his life. See, and it's the same way with us. You know, we have to spend time with the Lord to know Him, to really... You know, God is a person. I, I was thinking about this on the way home from the farm. I was working at the farm yesterday, and I was so tired I couldn't hardly hold my head up when I got home. But on the way home, the Lord began to deal with me about knowing Him. In order to get to know mm -hmm. Carolyn, I've got to spend time with Carolyn. Mm -hmm. I've got to talk to her. Mm -hmm. I've got to eat with her. I, I've got to, you know, go places with her, see what she... To really get to know... And that's the way we get to know the Lord. That's right. Spending time with Him. The Lord has ways He does things. I, he's an individual being. Supernatural, almighty, infinite, all those things, but He's still a person. And you get to know Him personally as a person. I'll never forget, and, and I'm going to shut up after no, this. No, one minute. Let me get my drink and you can go ahead. <laughs> it was your turn anyhow, so... <laughs> One day I was, I, I, I wanted to get another truck. I had a, a dually, and that thing was rough, and, and the diesel, and diesel was higher than gas. And, you know, I didn't really need it at the time. And I began to talk to the Lord about another vehicle. 
And I know this is just minuscule compared to the eternal things that we deal with. But I was praying in tongues in, in my little uh, efficiency apartment. And as I was praying, the Lord spoke to me. You know, I said, how did he speak to you? He didn't, it wasn't an audible voice, okay? I've never heard God's audible voice. Has anybody in here ever heard God's audible voice? Anybody? I have. God usually doesn't speak that way. Okay, if he, if he does, you're probably spiritual, spiritually dull, and he has to get through to you that way. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> the way it is. But anyway, God's main dealing with us is a leading in the inward spirit, the inward man. And so... I can say that it comes as a knowing. We know him. Okay. And, and when, when, when he confides in us, it is usually going to be a, a knowing that you have. Just a knowing. Yes, that's true. You just know it. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and I was sitting on the side of my bed, and I was praying in tongues, and, and, and a knowing came to me. That I was going to get a red quad cab Dodge with a Hemi, and it was going to be a, 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 a that's basically what he told me, a red quad cab Dodge with a Hemi in it. And I, I was like, wow. And I just knew it. And, and uh, uh, that next Sunday, Brother, and I, Brother Allen and I went out and ate at Wendy's. And, uh, Brother Allen said, Roger, I, I, you want to you wanna sell that truck of yours? I said, yeah, I, I want to get another truck. And uh, he said, well, I got this truck I think you'll be interested in. I said, is it red? He said, yeah. I said, he said, is it a quad cab? I said, yeah. He said, yeah. I, I said, does it have a Hemi in it? And he said, yeah. I said, he, I said, is it a Dodge? And he said, yeah. How do you know all that? See, God confided in me. See? He confided in me so that I could have real confidence. Yes. When I prayed, when I was believing. You know, God gave Abraham a, 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 a I would say, a blanket promise. You know, in you all the nations of the earth shall be blessed. You know? And, and Abraham believed that promise. But it wasn't until the Lord came to him a year before Isaac was born and confided in him of when it was going to take place. And that's when Abraham began to believe God apart from the circumstances because before that he was torn. He was Hagar, you know, different, well, how are you going to do it, Lord? And the Lord came back and said, Sarah's going to have a son about a year from now. And Sarah was listening too. And that brought confidence. Yes. The confiding. Yeah. That's of, true. Of God. Yes. With Abraham. It's yes. The same way yes. with you. If you'll seek, he'll speak. Yes. 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 If you'll seek, him, he'll speak. And when he speaks to you, then you can have confidence. Yes. You know, Brother Hagen had a lot of books about faith and. You know, people took them and, and misused them and abused them and, 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 and tried to make a, a, a methodology out of faith where you see it in the scripture and then you confess it and then you, until God, you make God do it. And, and that's not what the, the just of it was. The just of it was that if you read his books, real, The Real Faith, he talks about when he faced a challenge in his life, he went to the Word of God and he stayed and he prayed and he read the Word until God spoke to him through the mm -hmm. Scriptures mm -hmm. and confided in him and then he could have real faith. Mm -hmm. That inspires real faith. Yes, yes. So I would say, spend time with God. Yes. Until you hear from him and he confides in you. Mm -hmm. And whether you have a knowing or, or whether you come to church and Brother Allen or Sister Francis is teaching on the same thing that God is dealing with you on, or however God desires to speak to you and confide in you about what he wants. And then you have to co-labor with him. 
You have to cooperate with him and not allow unbelief to come in. Because there's going to be contradictory circumstances many times when God speaks. And all hell is going to break loose mm -hmm. to try to stop it. Yes, to confuse And I really it. believe that yes. that's what is yep. the real faith and the confidence that John mm -hmm. is talking about. Mm -hmm. is knowing. Mm -hmm. Knowing. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Rock. The truth is, it was his turn to teach, and we all, and we got, I didn't know he was going to be here today, so there, therefore, uh, if he comes up some more, hey, it's his turn. I'm just up here, so, <laughs> but anyhow, but I, you know, I, I was thinking when he was talking about the knowing, uh, this too may, is just something in my life, but it, I tell you what, when you have a knowing, when you know then you know that you know that you know, and you are not easily talked out of it, no matter if hell breaks loose. You stick with it. You know, when uh, Sister Frances asked me to come back and start teaching again after being retired for several years, um, that morning she called and, and she asked me to teach, and and she told me four-year-olds, and I thought, oh, I don't think so. But anyhow, she said, Carolyn, do this. Pray about it. There was a novel idea. I want you to know, and you may, whether you believe this or not, it's just plain old the truth. I, that was one morning I prayed about it after I got through talking to her, and all of a sudden it rose up within me so that I knew that I knew that I knew that that was what I was supposed to do. And I, let me tell you, I've had some challenges, not big ones. Uh, you know, how big can they be with a four-year-old except they're four years old? Uh, but I've had, there's been some challenges this year. And, but here's the thing, every time those challenges would come, I would go back to what I heard in prayer, speaking of confidence. I had the confidence that God had spoken. And there was no situation, no circumstance, there was nothing that could talk me out of it, even though it didn't look right, it didn't feel right at times. I plain old just wanted to go to the house at times. I didn't want to get out of bed sometimes. Brother Gary, that day did come. In the beginning, remember, I said, it's the honeymoon. Uh, and you said, yeah. <laughs> but anyhow, because in the beginning, I was so excited about school and, and everything. And then there came reality it came reality look life came in but because of just what brother roger was talking about that confidence because i know him but when i heard his voice that morning i knew that i knew that i knew that i'd heard from god and there was no situation no circumstance that could talk me out of it thank god thank god Look, church, we can have that confidence. We can have that confidence. But it all comes through what Brother Mark has been teaching us for two weeks. It comes through what Brother Roger said this morning. It all comes by spending time with him so that we can know when he speaks to us. And we can have the confidence that only he can give us when we pray. So it can be done. And that, and, but it all comes through knowing him. We have to know him. And the only way we know him is by spending time with him. Spending time with him in his word. There is no getting away or getting out or, or getting away. You know, I read something yesterday or the day before. I don't know where. It, yeah, on Facebook, of course. But I read this and this person was just spouting off, well, you know, I'm a believer. I, I'm, a, I'm a Christian. Now, I don't go to church. I don't go to church. I don't read the Bible every day. I don't pray every day. I don't pray sometimes. I don't pray once a week. And sometimes I don't read the Bible once a month. Well, I haven't read the Bible in the last year. And then you're going to profess that you know him? That is, y'all please correct me if I'm wrong. I would say it would be an impossibility. Am I wrong, Brother Roger, if, you, I, if it's been a year and I've never spoken to him, I've never read his word? Brother Mark, what do you think? Is that an impossibility that, 
that that could be so? We have to know him so that we can come to this place where we're talking about right here in the scriptures that if he, if, and if we know, if we know, if I know. See, that morning when I prayed, I knew that when I prayed, God was going to hear me. And I knew that the Spirit of God that lives within me, because you know you have His Holy Spirit living within you, so that you can know that you know that you know, that you can know Him. We have of His Spirit that lives within us. And so therefore, when I prayed that morning, I prayed knowing that God heard me, and if it was His will, He was going to give me the peace about it. That's another thing. We're led by peace. When I am following His will, I, I tend to, and I had peace that day. Uh, just a peace came over me. I had peace because I knew. But we cannot do this if we don't know Him. It says, and we know that He hear. If we know that He hears us, whatsoever we ask. We know that we have the petitions that we desire of him, but here it is, provided that it is his will. Provided it is his will. Look, church, I have prayed before. And I have just prayed and said, oh, Lord, your will be done. You know, I really like him. Uh, uh, yeah, oh, we want to get married, and I really do like him, and you know, uh, he floats my boat, and so I really, and I, I just know it's your will. I just, uh, but I'm praying. I'm praying. Your will be done. Your will be done. But I'm going to tell you one thing. When, you know, your body, soul, and spirit, do you know that you are a body or soul and a spirit? Well, when the flesh starts speaking, when what you're seeing is there and what you're hearing is there and what you're feeling in the soulish realm is there. Sometimes we get that all, and I got this in my notes somewhere, we get all confused. We get all confused. And then we think, oh, yeah, yeah, I, I, this is good, this is good. It must be the will of God because I feel it so deeply. And I would pray. And I would say, Lord, if it's your will, look, the truth is if God had spoken to me and said, Carolyn, nope, that's not my will for your life that you marry. Remember, I was married to him for a few minutes one time, uh, that person. But you know what? It was not God's will. Looking back, I know that, but I wanted what I wanted. So we can, like, try to manipulate God or stronghold God, strong-arm God into doing what we want Him to do. But when we know that we know, and when we truly want His will. You see, at that point in my life, what I truly wanted was a man in my life. I didn't want to go through life alone. I honestly didn't. I didn't want to face old age where I am now and the rocking chair on the back porch by myself. I didn't. It was that simple. I mean, you don't. You don't. So here I am, and there I am on the back porch, you know, rocking by myself. Cats. With my cats. One of them died. Uh, with my cats. But let me tell you something. It's not, uh, it's not uh, a bad life. It's not. It's not a bad life at all. I wish it could have been different. To be honest, I honestly wish it could have been different. But you know what? My God is the God of the difference. I wish it could have been different, but I serve a God who's the God of the difference. And if this, and if this was what, the way I am, living my life as I do. It was his will for my life because I finally prayed the prayer that never fails and is, Lord, your will be done. And when he let me, going back to knowing, when he let me, and I didn't want to pray that prayer, but I did, and when he let me know through his word, through his spirit, the Holy Spirit within me, know that I know that I know that this is my will for your life. 
then it is what it is. And he's a good God, and he's the God of the difference. Yes, look, at I wish it could have been different, but it wasn't. But he's been he who's made up the difference in my life. So we can know when we pray, if we ask, if we know that he hears us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desired of him. Now, I wanted to get to this verse 16. Guys, uh, <laughs> you may have to help me out here. It says, if any man see his brother sin a sin. <gasps> oh, my. I saw my sister girl sin a sin I saw my brother boy sin a sin it says if any man see his brother sin a sin which is not into death do you know there's sins there are sins that are not into death he shall ask and he shall give him life for them who sin not unto death now it says the believer who understands God's prescribed order of victory, which is the cross, shall pray for those. You know, I don't know why I had not thought about this before. Should pray for those who are ignorantly going in a different op uh, 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 direction opposite of the cross. These people have believed God for salvation. We talking about we saw someone sin a sin. And it looks like they act like it's okay to sin that sin. And, but let me, you know, we always go back to this. Sometimes that sin that is being sin is the sin of working out our salvation, of working to stay safe, of working the works thing. If we're going to work our way, it's a misplaced faith when we place our faith in works. Faith placed anywhere other than Jesus Christ and the cross must be. Uh, is is wrong. That leads to sin. The it, so it's to it says um, we in sin is not a sin unto death. If but if the direction is other than the cross, but these sins are done in ignorance. Do you know that be, this was me before I came to know the truth of grace and faith, the message of the cross. That was me. I would sin a sin, but, but then I would try to work it out. And I'd work hard. And I'd work, and I'd work, and I'd work, and I'd work. Uh, folks, there's a better way. There's a better way. And it's by simply placing our faith and trust in Jesus Christ and what he's done on the cross. So here's the thing. We pray for those. We can pray for those people that are sinning the sin of just... Of faith by works. We can pray for those people. We should pray for those people. I guess someone prayed for us because we came to know with revelation understanding. So we pray for those that we see that they're saved. They're on their way to heaven. They do love the Lord, but that it's just so, like they just fall into temptation and they work so hard to get out of it, and, and they don't understand why they're still dealing with it, pray the prayer for those people. And the prayer is that they would come to have a revelation of the truth of the message of the cross so that they can walk in victory and not defeat. Pray those prayers for those people. You know, and then the other thing is, uh, let me get this one, and it says, the last part, that I do not, uh, uh, there is a sin unto death. There is a sin unto death. I do not say that he shall pray for it. So this sin are those people who do not believe at all. And you know, I cannot ask God Wait, this gets sticky. I can't ask God to forgive those sins of the, that those people are committing if they're unbelievers anyhow. Is that making sense? I don't know. It, it's kind of hard for me to make this make sense. Uh, if they are unbelievers anyhow, here's the prayer we pray for people that are unbelievers, that they be saved. 
that the scales of unbelief, I saw that in the Brother Swagger's notes, that the scales of unbelief would fall from their eyes, from their heart, from their understanding. And you know, I thought, well, I don't think I've really prayed that before. But for the, the, the unbelieving to fall away, the scales that keep them from believing, that those things fall away so that they could become a believer. So it, it says that, um, that we shall, if we're going to pray for those people, we can't even ask that they be forgiven of, of sins, but that they come to know the truth. Guys, do you have anything to say, uh, Brother Roger? Well, come say it, please, because I'm, I'm, I know what I'm trying to say, but I'm just not getting it together. So please come say it. Now what? There's, uh, there's three sins, omission, commission, and the sin unto death. You know, a commission sin is something that you commit, and a mission is something that you fail to do. Yes, that was the one I was trying to talk about before I go. So, but there's a third category of sin, too. And uh, it does not, all people do not qualify. Yes. You know. Mm-hmm. You have to qualify for the sin. Uh, in the New Testament, if you came to Christ, especially if you were a Jewish believer, in order to join the Jewish community again, you had to renounce Christ. You had to renounce your faith in Christ. And uh, if you'll read in Hebrews 6, it says uh, that it's impossible to renew people to repentance when they crucify the Son of God afresh and put him to an open shame. So they actually deemed him worthy of death. They crucified him again, and they put him to a public shame. They had to actually go through a ritual to where they renounced Christ. They had to publicly renounce him in order to, be, to come back into the Jewish community. And they were under a lot of persecution. But it also gives you qualifications there. It says they've been enlightened, tasted the heavenly gift, been marked, made partakers of the Holy Ghost, tasted the good word of God, and the powers of the world to come, if they shall fall away to renew them again unto repentance. In other words, people that have gone this far, and you have to understand these people are mature. They are mature Christians. They are not, they've actually had the, the word powers of the world to come. They've actually had gifts of the Spirit operating gifts of power operating in their lives. Somebody like Brother John, if he were to fall away and renounce Christ, he may not be able to come back to God. Now, if you see somebody at the altar coming to Christ, that's repentance. People that commit this sin will never even come back into a church again, except maybe to cause problems. Well, let me ask you this. So, but isn't it true that they will not even have a desire right. to come back? That's what it says. Yeah. It says they will to bring them unto repentance. Yes. So it's, it's, you, they won't, there's no use in praying for that person. There's only a few people that I know of uh, that, that ministers that I've dealt with that have dealt with people that have done this. It's a very rare thing and, and, and very unusual. Somebody that goes that deep into God is usually not going, they may backslide and get away from God, but they always have a reverence for God. These people were being pressured by, because of finances, because of persecution. And you know, one other scripture in the book of Hebrews in the 10th chapter says, if we sin willfully, after we receive the full knowledge of the truth, there remains no, no more sacrifice for sin, but a certain fearful looking for a judgment, you know, uh, and, and it talks about, you know, it, it, it talks about trotting underfoot the Son of God, counting the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified an unholy thing, and doing despite to the Spirit of grace. Mm -hmm. See, that's the sin he's talking about, mm -hmm. trotting underfoot the Son of God. See, you, act, you it's not a sin of commission like adultery or theft or, 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 or covetousness or anything like that. This is an actual sin where a person turns their back on him and despises the spirit of grace. And that's the unpardonable that sin. That is what we call, that's what most people call the unpardonable sin. It's called the sin unto death, where a person actually dies spiritually again. 
and they're no longer spiritually alive. Now, people can backslide and come back to God. I've actually before in my life and come back. Mm -hmm. I, was just, I was just so hungry in my heart for God. I wanted to come back to God. I missed him so much. You know what I'm saying? And through ignorance, I stayed out of fellowship with God because of wrong teaching. We didn't understand grace like we do now, yes. the power of God. So, you know, we don't have to worry about babies in Christ committing this sin. You don't accidentally sin, commit this sin by saying the wrong thing or getting angry <coughs> and saying, so I've said stuff in anger before. You know, when I was backslid, I would, I, 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 one time I told the Lord, I said, Lord, I was just under such conviction. I was so miserable. I said, Lord, please just go away and leave me alone. Mm -hmm. But I didn't really mean it. And he sees the heart. He sees the heart, <laughs> see. I was just a baby Christian, just uh -huh. a little baby Christian. Yes. Just been born again and was had a glorious experience with Christ, and then here I am backslid. I don't understand why. I don't understand how to get back to God. You know what I'm saying? I'm just a fledgling. And, and, and did you think, no, he came right back to me again. That's right. That's it. He came right That's back it. to me again. But see, it says these people sin willfully. They make a choice. Yeah. They set their will against God. <laughs> see? And, and so there's a big difference between a sin of commission, a sin of omission. And, when you, and there's some people that read these scriptures and they, they you know, oh, we sin, we'll, oh, I've done it. This is it. I'm out. You know, and they think they've done the <laughs> like I have. sin. And then they're, you know, they have suicidal thoughts and they get depressed and they run around looking for somebody to give them a word from God that they're loved. And look, it, it explains it right here. Mm -hmm. You don't have to worry about that. You well, let me, I, I have another question. So, with these people mm -hmm. who are like that, uh, should we pray for them for that to be, the scales of unbelief to be removed, or is it just a done deal? Now, you see what I'm saying? Well, it says right there, <laughs> I, you should not pray. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and only God knows whether somebody's done this or not. Right, right, right. You know so we don't know. We so don't know. if we well, prayed it, we're John, praying. Well, like in John's situation, he would see somebody. It mm -hmm. was see. In other words, he was part of the Jewish community. And so he would see somebody that was once in on fire for God, once, you know, a, a mature Christian, somebody that had the gifts of the Spirit operating. He knew them, and he saw them publicly mm -hmm. humiliate and renounce mm -hmm. Christ. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then... He would not pray for them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I see. You know see. what I'm saying? Now, I see. And you have to be led by the Spirit. Because, yes, absolutely. You know, sometimes people get backslid and they get angry with God and they, they actually become worse than they were when they were saved, but it's just because they're so miserable. That's and, true. You know, God, I've seen people, God restore people that were backslidden mm -hmm, for years and mm -hmm, years and years mm -hmm. and just restore them right back into fellowship with Himself. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, unless God gives us a word. That's it. We can't make a judgment no, call on that no, because right. we don't know the we heart can. of the people. So if we do pray that that unbelief be broken mm -hmm. or removed, we haven't done anything wrong by doing that no, because we no. truly don't know. No. Won't no. send you to hell. Won't send you to hell. No. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, you know, I, I love to pray in the Spirit. Yes. About things. Yeah. Yeah. I love yeah. to pray in the Spirit. Yeah. Yeah. And then, then you know you're praying the will That's of God. That's right. That's true. True, These true, true. These are very controversial. Yes. But they're in there. And they need to be properly interpreted. Yes, absolutely. And you have to rightly divide the Word of God. Yes. And like I said, this is a very, very rare thing. Mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. God put it in there for a reason. Yes, yes there was a purpose. There was a not, purpose. Not Jeremiah says, don't pray for these people because I'm not going to hear you. So <laughs> if you do pray for them. <laughs> I'm not listening. He's not going to I think it was one place he said, if Noah and Samuel were to pray, I wouldn't hear their prayer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, thank you, Brother Rod. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Brother Mark, Brother Roger, for your help this morning. Uh, you were able to clear things up for us, so I do appreciate it. And thank all of you for listening and for being a part of it.